stop trying to be happy all the freaking time. It's actually making things worse for you. At least that's what Dr. Adam Fraser, author of Strive, Embracing the Gift of Struggle thinks. And I agree. He has a chapter in his book called Could Everyone Please Shut Up About Happiness? In it, he talks about how our society's obsession with happiness is actually backfiring. We're so obsessed with constantly being happy that we're ignoring the bad feelings that could lead us to grow, evolve, and become better people. The problem is that as soon as we feel some bad emotion, we think that there's something wrong with us. Like, why can't I just be happy? But nothing's wrong. You're just feeling a different emotion right now. Like anxiety. Anxiety is totally normal. Anxiety about the future or a big project at work or a fight with a friend. It's a totally normal response. But instead of sitting with that emotion, feeling uncomfortable and learning why we feel this way, we look to find something to bring us out of that emotion and back to happiness as quickly as possible. It's like we're trying to find the quick fix instead of doing the work that will lead to true happiness. And I think that's where a lot of people, me included, are going wrong right now. I have a lot of negative feelings about my future. I even ironically had anxiety about making this very video. Also, it didn't help that I wasn't doing great mentally anyway, but more on that in another video. So instead of sitting with these negative emotions, I went on social media looking for a dopamine hit, a small sparkle of happiness. Instead of feeling those emotions and trying to figure out why I was feeling that way, I was just trying to mask it. Unsuccessfully, of course. Because while on my phone, it just got worse. Seeing people who looked happy in their lives, doing amazing things, having active social lives, it just kept getting worse and worse. In the end, it took me completely turning off my phone to get this script done. And even then, I found like four hours of other stuff to do in the house. Seriously, it hasn't been this clean since I moved in. But after spending so much time without any distractions, I was able to recognize why I was having so much anxiety about this video. I realized that I felt like a hypocrite. Who was I to talk about getting better mentally when I had just fallen into a bad mental state again? I have no tangible qualifications to show, no diplomas on my wall that say that I know what I'm talking about. But I recognize that that's not the point of my channel. I never claim to be an expert. This is just my mental health journey packaged in videos about things that I've found that have helped me help myself and hopefully can also help others. And the fact that you're watching this video right now means that it works. I was able to get past my anxiety not by forcing myself to be happy, but by letting myself feel my anxiety. So back to Dr. Fraser. Nope, nope, not that one. He uses an example about a person getting negative feedback about their leadership and feeling bad about it, which again is normal. Now in the example, they can do one of two things. Either they can get rid of the emotion by blaming their team, blaming some outside force, or they can sit with that emotion and think about what they can do to learn from the feedback and evolve and become a better leader. And yeah, if you do this, you are going to feel more uncomfortable. That's part of the process. His book is all about becoming a striver and embracing struggle. And he points out that the people who are really good strivers aren't just built different. They understand that struggling sucks. Having to learn new technologies or going through a disruption in your business or bettering yourself because your team thinks you're a bad leader. These all suck. Now, these are all examples of growth-centric struggles, one of the four types of struggles outlined in his book, and the only one that gives us opportunities to evolve. I don't want you to think that every single struggle in your life needs to be seen as something that needs to be embraced or as a learning opportunity. 
So real quick, the others are traumatic struggle, like living through a war, natural disasters, or abuse. Then you have sorrowful struggle, things that make us sad, like a natural death, a relationship ending, or falling into financial distress. And lastly, we have a struggle in the dredge, which is daily struggles like traffic, systematic frustrations, or how there's always more dirty dishes to clean. So the growth-centric struggles are the ones that we choose to engage in. They are accompanied by bad emotions, but we have to actively choose to struggle through them. You receive negative feedback, choose to learn from it and improve yourself. You don't like that you sit in front of the TV all day, choose to find a real hobby. You keep getting injured when you're running, choose to actually do the exercises that would strengthen your legs instead of always skipping them because they're so boring. As I said before, it's not like the people who embrace the struggle like it. They do it despite knowing that it's going to suck. So embrace the suck. Nope, can't say that. When I moved to Finland in the middle of the winter, there was a day where we couldn't get the moving van out of its parking spot. And I remember feeling so happy while working on getting it out despite it sucking. After living a life of convenience in Germany, everything just a click of a button away, next day shipping, and no real weather to fight with. I enjoyed this feeling of finally having to struggle for something that I wanted. We are living in a world where any discomfort is being removed and we're pushing a lot of convenience technology without really thinking of the consequences. Like having your entire house connected to the internet or having food delivered to your door every day. And don't even get me started on these things. It's following me. All of these examples and more have benefits, especially for the differently abled and the elderly. But most of the time people are using them out of convenience, not necessity. And by doing that, you're not even giving yourself the chance to get used to discomfort, even on the small scale. Then when inevitably discomfort finds you in whatever form of struggle it takes on, you won't know what to do and how to deal with it. It's been so eye-opening living here in Finland where we don't have Amazon. No one day shipping and you have to pay extra to get packages delivered to your door. Don't get me wrong, things are changing here too, especially in the bigger cities. But I've enjoyed the struggle of walking through snowstorms to get to the grocery store or pick up a package, running in minus 18 degree weather, Oh, and having to take a one and a half hour bus ride into Helsinki just to buy a camera charger, which ended with me meeting a person who was going to change my life. So I guess even the struggle can sometimes be beneficial. What I want you to take away from this video is that every emotion is useful. It's the way our body communicates with us. It's telling us that something's wrong. And if we start ignoring some emotions in the pursuit of only the good ones, we will never be fulfilled. Thank you for watching. Peace. Nice, please.